So good evening or morning, everybody. We're here to experiment a little bit. I'm doing a different kind of video. Today, I am going to be going over who I think may be the biggest troll in cycling history. Peter Sagan, um, the sprint, the moment when you um, went wide in that curve, was that the moment you lost today? No. So before we get too far into this subject, I, I need to tell you kind of where I'm coming from, why I wanted to do this style of video. I'll, I'll post a stamp if you just want to get to the Peter stuff, but this is a little housekeeping that I feel like needs to be addressed. Something I've been trying to do for the past probably three years, I, I've just been trying to really, if I have a firm opinion on something, I try to like break it down really, really hard, go through everything that I possibly can with that opinion and see why I have that opinion and is it correct or is it incorrect. A light bulb kind of went off in my head and I was like, well, if I want to kind of do a video on some of my favorite cyclists, let's say, I really want to do it as a journey with you guys. So if this video works out and I can do it properly, what I would like to accomplish is at the beginning of the video, I want to tell you guys my opinion of this individual cyclist or maybe the event that happened, something like that. I'm going to do what I normally do, and while I sit on the toilet, I'm going to research the crap out of it. And hopefully in uh, probably four weeks, I will have a different opinion or my opinion will be solidified. But I would like to go through that process with you guys, see what I find out. I wanted to base this video on the most prolific goat in cycling that is still alive today, and that is Peter Sagan. Very popular victory in the world of cycling because one of the sport's great showmen has landed the world title. Peter Sagan from Slovakia is a world champion. But when he first burst onto the scene at, I think he was like 19 or 20 years old, I did not like him. I've always kind of been the person to not like to jump to conclusions, but I, I just knew I didn't care for his attitude. I think it was his arrogance, what I perceive to be arrogance on and off the bike that had me like full on Karen reaction to some of his antics, I guess. He's just having fun. Let the kid have fun. You know, I still have these leftover feelings, I guess, about Peter from when I was young, and he was my villain through a lot of that because I loved these other guys that I grew up watching and he was crushing them, so Peter was my villain. So I brought that with me even today, where I was like, I just don't like the guy. But I'm hoping that opinion changes. So let's just get into the Peter Sagan info, and I'm going to go through with you guys why I think he is one of the biggest trolls in cycling. I think you really have to understand somebody's mindset, though, before you can start commentating on what label you're going to put them in. It's hard to find a lot of info on Peter's childhood. Peter Sagan was born in 1990 in Slovakia, but at the time, like I think it was 1989, the Velvet Revolution was happening in that area. And it wasn't until, I think it was like 93 or 94, that Slovakia became who they are. So there was a period, like when Peter was very, very young, that they really didn't have an identity. And a lot of crime actually started coming in to Slovakia at the time because the government was kind of in shambles. He has three brothers, one sister, and he is the youngest in uh, the family. And I did find it a little bit weird. So over and over again in a lot of these articles, they talk about his parents not really being around, that he was raised by his sister. The articles always say that his parents weren't around because they were running a grocery store, which I just find odd, but it's a different country. It was a much different time back then. I, I don't really know what that means. I would love some clarification on that. Like, did his parents just never come home? Did they have to work day and night at this grocery store? I, I mean, either way, most of the stuff that you read about Peter starts at nine. Nine years old is when he gets kind of into racing his bicycle, um, and his older brother came first. Uraj, Urai, Urej, Ur Urai, I think that's how you pronounce his brother's name, was the first who he is still a professional cyclist to this day. So Peter started racing because of his older brother. He was very, very good at mountain biking. I think that is kind of his first love, mountain biking and cyclocross for that matter. And he ended up becoming the junior world champion on a mountain bike. So that is definitely where he started. Peter 
got his very, very first Pro Tour contract from Team Liqui Gas. Leaky, or as one of my friends calls it, Leaky Gas. Hell, that might be how you're supposed to pronounce it. I call it Liqui Gas, because gas is liquid. And from there, Peter's career took off. I mean, he won, and he got another win, and another win, and another win. I think he's, I mean, he has won the world championships three years in a row. That's, that's unheard of. So before we delve deep into his trolliness, we have to define first what a troll is, because it is not a bad thing. So a troll is an internet term. It is internet slang for a person who starts flame wars or intentionally upsets people on the internet by posting inflammatory and digressive, extraneous, or off-topic messages in an online community, such as a news group with the intent of provoking the readers into displaying emotion. Basically, a troll, if you didn't get that, it's somebody that starts something to get a reaction out of people. So we're gonna break down Peter's four trolls that I believe at least somewhat proves that if he's not a troll, he's the biggest troll in the cycling community. So his first trolls are definitely off of the back of his wins. So we'll call this first one his uh, trolling wins. So for, for a few years after Peter burst onto the scene, people weren't actually trying to figure out if he was going to win. Uh, the talk of the town was what was Peter going to actually do after he crossed the finish line. I mean, uh, one of my thoughts at the time was how freaking good do you have to be to start planning out your uh, victory salutes. Got about 50 minutes to go. It's gonna be a 14th state success. It is the world champion, Peter Sagan, taking stage five off to the Suisse, arms in the air. So Peter's most famous victory salute, and really what kind of kicked off this whole period of his career, was his win on the stage three 2012 edition of the Tour de France. Uh, before the Tour de France, Peter had won four stages of the Tour of Switzerland and five stages of the Tour of California. So he obviously came into this tour with a lot of confidence and it showed and he had something to prove. Although this was his first ever Tour de France, like keep that in mind, this is the first time this kid has ever been to the Tour. He's 22 at the time. He already had it in his head that he's good enough and he's going to obliterate some people. This particular stage it was tailor-made for Peter's riding style. It had enough hills to get rid of all the pure sprinters, but it would still finish in a sprint, so it wasn't like climbing up the side of a mountain for a sprint. Sprint opened up in around 300 meters to go. Peter unleashed his fury and completely just rode away from the competition. I mean, he rode away in such a fashion he could look around and uh, go, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna, um, you know, have a little fun right now. And after the race, of course, everyone wanted to know what that was about. Peter always wants to put on a show for the spectators, which I thoroughly respect and I thoroughly think is something that is missing in a lot of pro cycling today. Peter said that his teammates told him to be like Forrest Gump. Uh, when you tell Forrest to run, he runs. And then when you tell Peter to win, he wins. So that's the little meaning behind the running man gesture at the end of the race. Peter also went on to win three total stages of the Tour de France that year and the points jersey. And the most impressive thing about all of that was it was his first appearance at the Tour de France. Peter has now been around for a while, but I think people forget how freaking good he was when he first came onto the scene. I mean, this is a new guy, first year at the tour, and he wins the green jersey. And he has since transcended that to be like the goat of the green jerseys. I won't, won't get into that too much because sometimes it feels like the green jersey's tailor made for him now, but you know, you have to bow down a little bit to that. And after his finishing antics gained him a lot of popularity with the crowd, he decided to continue with these, uh, what you want to call them? Finishing salutes? So the second and the most prolific of all of Peter Sagan's trolls are his amazing interviews. And at first I really, really thought that there was just some sort of language barrier. But the more you watch Peter, the more you realize that he's just trolling the news guys. I don't really think he cares that much for um, reporters. Was that the moment you lost today? No.
And I mean, what can you say? He, he seems to like to mess with them. And I, I have to say that I absolutely love Peter's interviews. You can always count on them to be hilarious. And they are a true embodiment of what a troll in cycling should be. In our studio. They told us you were sick, but you aren't sick, so we are, <laughs> we are very happy you are here. Uh, Seb, how strong was he on the way? Yeah, he was well, uh, <laughs> it was well, uh, yeah, I feel him all strong. You were very strong. Why you done that attack? Why you did an attack? Why did you not attack? You have to attack, I, I don't uh, go for you. Yeah, because we said uh, to go for a sprint. Ah. Had you said we were going to three? But... He not only trolls the journalists, he, uh, he interrupts, I guess you could say, some of the other cyclists in the middle of their interviews, uh, you know, just to get his, his pretty little face on the camera. <laughs> no, I don't think there's any malicious intent with any of this. I think it is the true embodiment of a troll. He's literally having a little fun at the expense of a journalist. And I think he's doing it because that is probably his most hated portion of being a pro cyclist. That's my two cents on it. And this is where the true troll comes out, is in his interviews. Hmm? Yeah, you're that. Oh boy, Peter. You done goofed. The incident took place at the 2013 Tour of Flanders, which is one of my personal favorite races. I believe Peter was around like 23 at the time, and, and he just battled for the win. Only one way to get rid of Peter Sagan, and that's literally to kill him. Get there. Stick the knife in. Cancellara won, came out on top, and during the podium presentation, Peter did something rather stupid. Once again, the Eau de Quarmont and the Paterberg. Yes, he pinched the podium girl's rump, and oh boy, the backlash from this. And I don't think there's much that needs to be said about this event. It has been covered and covered and covered. And Peter has put out a formal apology, even though the video quality is very, very terrible. After this apology, Peter has not reverted back to doing anything this bad. It was definitely his low point in his cycling career. Um, but that's, I think that's all that needs to be said about it. I sincerely apologize to Maya for uh what I did on the podium yesterday after the race because it's, it, it was uh, wrong of me and I don't think when I was up on the podium. Now I'm not defending what Peter did, but you can't mention this incident without mentioning podium girls. What I mean is that he pinched a girl's butt who was a podium girl. That's what they are literally called is a podium girl. But either way, it became a big debate after this incident but the podium girls are now a thing of the past. I, for one, am glad. I think that this was a, an old tradition that is not aligned with the values of cycling in the 21st century. I would love for cycling to be this fun but noble endeavor, and I'm glad that the values are shifting into that direction. And his fourth troll, um, I'm not really sure what to call his fourth troll. Um, making fun of himself, the new and improved Peter. We'll just call it the fourth troll. Now this final one's not so much of a troll, but you can't mention Peter without his entertainment value. So as he gets older and wealthier, a lot wealthier, he, he took a different turn with his trolliness. Now I think these lend themselves more to the side of him being entertaining and not so much trolling, but either way, the one that really caught my eye. So it almost brings this thing to a full circle. Peter portrayed Forrest Gump in a skit, um, and Forrest Gump has a speech impediment, <laughs> and Peter has a horrendous speech impediment as well. It's not, it's not a speech impediment, it's a language barrier going on, but he has a thick accent. So having him play Forrest Gump was freaking hilarious. Always said, life was like a box of chocolate. You never know what you are gonna get. Peter also says he can't dance, and uh, he doesn't sing, he doesn't do any of this, but I, I have to disagree, Mr. Sagan. 
because he also performed Greece. You don't see other pro cyclists doing these things. Like you've got Andre Greipel, who I would love to do a video on because I, I, I love Andre. He's hilarious, um, and he do he does rap videos, but they're all in good fun. But now he's gotten to the point in his career that he, I think, has time and the authority to be able to do some of these entertaining things. So, after copious amounts of Peter Sagan information I have consumed over the last week, I have to say that my opinion has honestly changed. At first, I did see Peter as this arrogant, young, cocky cyclist that I just, I just did not care for anymore. Now, I see him as this kid that really wanted to break out of Slovakia. Um, he has this really, really strong sense of, I don't know what you want to call it, like taking care of his family, his friends, and he cares a lot for his fans. Uh, that, that means a lot to me. Not as a fan, but like the friends and family thing. That's really cool. Especially the fact that no matter where he goes, his brother has to go with him. Not that he's forcing his brother, but pro cycling contracts are very, very, very slim and hard to come by. And his brother is a good cyclist, but Peter makes sure he's got a contract too. That's cool. I, I do believe that he is a bit of a jokester, but I believe he does it because he's trying to be entertaining, not necessarily that he has any kind of malintentions. And I know that I was in the minority of people that was not pulling for Peter, but my opinion has honestly changed. I like the guy and I truly do hope the best for him. Now with all of that being said, if you have made it this far in the video, Thank you so much uh, for sticking around to the end because this was my first commentary style video, I guess. Um, and I wanted to do this, like I said at the beginning, because I have this, I don't know what you want to call it, problem where I will get like hung up on a subject. So like I didn't like Peter. My brain says, well, why not? Like if, if I don't like a presidential candidate, why not? I need to research the crap out of it until I can convince myself the other side's argument and see it and see if, you know, I can agree with that a little bit. And I figured if I'm gonna be doing this in my own free time, just to better myself, why not show it to you guys as well? There's a few things I would ask from you guys. If you do enjoy this content, please like, press the subscribe button as well. Um, but down in the comments, let me know what made you stay this long because if you made it this far, I at least entertained you enough. But also tell me, tell me something that I did correctly. <laughs> to make you watch this far because I wanna continuously improve and I wanna know what helped do that. As well as, let me know any topic you'd like me to cover in regards to cycling. That's what I do this mainly with. So if it's another cyclist, an incident, anything like that, I love researching this and I would love to research for you guys. Anyway, that's all the time that I have for you today. Um, I will see everyone in the next video. Thanks for sticking around. I love you all. Bye bye.